In this video, I'll show how to deal with multiple images and how to fix spaces and fingers on all of those images. I'm running this setup through hundreds of generated AI images and it will find and tweak specifically hands and faces. It is a setup which does require flux and therefore it does mean that you need a fairly powerful graphics cards. Uh, I think minimum 12 gigs of VRAM. However, there is an option. I have a setup which is not automated and which can fix single parts of the body, either a face or hands. It's running on the cloud. You can get 25 minutes of free trial and actually run some stuff there. The link is in the description. It's an affiliate link to run Comfy. And I also did the whole video how to do that. It's also in the description but if you do have a fairly powerful computer and you want to run it automated then let's check out the whole setup of using comfy if you're very new to comfy i have a whole free introduction to it on my patreon i will give the link in the description go check it out in this video i'll show fairly complex networks if you don't want to spend a lot of time rebuilding them and copying them i recommend to go on my patreon and get all these workflows and networks with all other little extra bits that i provide rig models if you want to pose your own character in blender and then render it i will show multiple workflows and they will increase in complexity the first workflow it only fixes one element of the person or any image it doesn't really have to be a person so we start with the load image badge node where i copy paste the path to the folder which is going to cycle the images then i switch the mode to incremental image and it picks up every new image after i click run then i have this preview of the image is going to pick up so i can see that it's cycling then next one is this florence 2 model which comes from a custom nodes pack which is florence 2 pack once you install the pack you just create this node and when you run it it will automatically download the models that you need to, to use it has multiple choice of models in this case i was on the large fine-tuned a large and base are all good base is faster and also was giving good results i use both i think i will try to use base next time actually and then this model goes inside the mask extraction group it connects our images from the load image batch node and it connects our Florence 2 model. Here we write what we want to find and our task is captioned to phrase grounding, it will find the area. You can see there are a lot of different options. Some of those options are to extract information about the image, act as visual language model. We don't use it here, we only need caption to phrase grounding. Then this goes to Gaussian blur mask because if the edges on the mask are a little bit too sharp, it tends to sometimes create a sharp transition then this mask to the mask to sex node and i'm using this conversion to sex because i am using this sex detailer that comes from this impact pact sex stands for segmentation because we are segmenting that particular mask out and we are pressing it to 512 pixels in resolution proportionally and that gives us more resolution to render the hands or faces and therefore we get a better result and usually this problem with hands happened because the resolution of the image is not enough say if i only render the portrait of this person with the hand on the neck and it will fill up all the pixels here we will get actually very nice hands but when we do a full figure there are not enough pixels to get the hands or faces really good or really right i mean in this particular case the the face was good the hands were not and this detail has positive prompt coming in positive prompt is connected by the clip model to our dual clip loader where we are loading two models that we have to use to run this setup you can see here i was dealing a lot with like two hands five fingers even if there's only one hand it will still run this prompt as normal the negative for blank we don't need it and i have this flux guidance that helps to pipe this request back to our detailer and another option that we have here we have our variational autoencoder that we need to load up and we have our original model which is flux dev in this case for segmentation main detail node the only thing that we are really looking at here is the steps count 20 25 30 20 is good enough honestly really stands for the quality and then denoise so the more you denoise if i go below 0 0 0.5 it will start to create random stuff it will be creating like a vehicle instead of the hands or we'll put another face there so it will be really really random if i put it to 0 
0.9, it's try to keep the same screwed up hand or face there. So I usually keep the values between 0.65 to 0.7. Then this all goes to our final two nodes save image and preview. So I have this RG3 preview node and you can see before and after. There's a tendency that it can create a bit smaller hands sometimes, but that's not that noticeable and this hands much better. You do need to run it a few times and let me click run. Every About 80% of generations or 60% of generations will not be good at all. I clicked to run it, it started to cycle the image and it picked up a different image ahead in the folder. She's a very interesting study. It's great to show. In this case, it fixed the hand by hiding it, but it also picked up the whole figure. So it actually redid the whole thing here because the mask when glitched out and the whole area around the figure. If I actually typed in something like person, this would have been the mask that it would create. Uh, it, it does happen sometimes. In this case, it was actually quite a nice edit. You can see the face is now nice. Everything going to improve there. The feet are nice. The design of the suit changed quite a bit. But this is why you want to run this model continuously of 100 generations to then cherry pick the one that is going to be the best. This is the example where the hands got actually worse than they used to be. Yeah, you have to keep running and keep running. The second workflow, this is where we pick up the face as well. So the first top part is the one I showed before. This is the same setup. We have our Florence model that's masking the part of the image and cutting that segment. All looks more complicated, but this is the same thing eventually. We're just cascading the same setup. I have my load image patch that then, and I have that load Florence model that goes at the top to the hands identifier, so mask extraction for hands, looks for that, then it goes and fits it into the detail, the segmentation detailer, and I can see how the hands were treated here, and I did run a couple times to get a better look the hands are almost there you can see that hand, that finger is a bit screwed up but I would, I would maybe run it a couple more times but that top hand is great we have that image and then what we're doing first we need to find and mask the face out so this is the same image coming from long image page now the same model you don't want to duplicate any nodes with models because every node with a model will be kept in memory. So if you duplicate that, it uh, fill up the memory very quick of your graphics card and you don't have to. You can reuse the same model in multiple nodes uh, and run it effect efficiently. This is the mask extraction for face. I'm looking for the face. It finds it here. Then it goes to the segmentation. This is the second segmentation node. We have our first segmentation node, which did the hands. We created the image, that image then goes down to the second segmentation node that is now dealing just with the face. And then I can use this RG3 compare for the face. Okay, you can see the face got all basically became human before it wasn't. And I'm comparing before and after with the original image. I'm not comparing before and after with the image of the hands that were done. In this way, you can then take this image and you can carry on and cascade it and say, fix something else, or fix the boots or fix the background. And it can keep on fixing and fixing image. It does get a bit impractical pretty quick. I think fixing two things, two main things, hands and faces is the biggest focus, but this is how it works. We have cascading system of segmentation nodes. Again, if you don't want to build this, it's on Patreon, you can get it there. And then I have this monstrosity. It is a bit unnecessary setup. So I'm using that cascading two seg segmentation nodes to find faces and fix hands and faces. And this is basically three folders. And it was more of a test to see how we could set up three folders to run and find different stuff in those images in all three folders and how that can actually work. And the most important thing here is that we are using the same Florence model and the same do clip loader and we're using the same vector encoder VAE model and we're using the same flux depth model for all of them they just replugged into all of the segmentation nodes I don't think there is much need into these setups this particular setup uh, however I wanted to show that the complexity can be increased and maybe if you need five folders running different ideas different 
fixes on different images. Maybe one is medieval, another one is fantasy, sci-fi, and want to be very specific about, about what's going to be fixed. This is a setup, setup you could potentially build by duplicating the multiple workflows and just having this load image patch node for each one of those groups and reconnecting other nodes to original AI models and running and fixing stuff out. If you want to run a simple in-paint setup on a cloud, the link is in the description. I'll be posting more videos about different types of Confi workflows. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.